And so David sees Bathsheba. He sees that she's beautiful to behold. And 2 Samuel 11, 4 says, And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Now, some claim that David raped Bathsheba. Has, has anybody else heard this claim? You know, there's all kinds of new, you know, woke type of gender studies type of claims that are being made from that feminist perspective, from that anti-God perspective uh, about the Bible. This happens frequently. You know, the feminism that we think about that many think about is not the actual feminism being taught. You know, we all believe that men and women are equal in value and worth to God, but we're different, you know. Um, we have different functions, different roles. Doesn't mean that one is less valuable to God. Without women, there would be no men. There would be no babies, right? Uh, but there's different roles. And so when you, it's the tip of the iceberg though with feminism, when you really look into it, it's a lot more uh, sinister than they make it out to be. Uh, when you really look at what they're teaching, it's these kind of theories. They say that David raped Bathsheba. And I think it's absolutely blasphemous because David, at least up until this point, has been a picture of Christ. And so by saying that about David, in essence, you're, I mean, you're maligning one of God's men, a man after God's own heart, and you're, and you're maligning a picture of Christ and Christ himself. And so David did not rape Bathsheba. That's ludicrous. Bathsheba came voluntarily because she could have said no. And the language is, and took her, and she came in unto him. You see, it's reciprocal. He took her, but she came in unto him. She consented. So this implies that it was mutual and consensual. He took her, she came in unto him, and he lay with her. Bathsheba here shows no resistance, no, no you know, objection, nothing at all. Uh, now, David was the king, and he was in a position of power, and Bathsheba was a subject of the king. So you could make the case that because of the disparity in power between David and Bathsheba, that there was a power imbalance inherently, and that this complicates the notion of consent. And that's the argument that they put forth. But it's a stretch. It's a real stretch to claim that David raped Bathsheba because the biblical text does not support that, and that's not impre the impression that the context of the Bible gives us. We also know that later in the next chapter when Nathan the prophet comes and rebukes David for his sin of adultery and murder, uh, he makes a point only about those two sins, about adultery and murder. There's no mention whatsoever of rape or any nonsense like that. It's just not inherent in the text. That's a modern, postmodern kind of critical reading of, of the text. And the reason why people sometimes make this claim is partly because of the language where it says David took Bathsheba. David took Bathsheba. And this is something that I often see uh, with the ignorance and uneducation, sadly, of modern readers, okay? Because modern readers, sadly, are often uneducated in basic literature, uh, history, and textual analysis, okay? So what they do is they apply modern vernacular, modern language, like he took her to ancient texts. So we have to ask the question, what does it mean that David took her according to the Bible? according to the language of those times. Whereas in the Bible, when a man takes a woman, it's not by force, it's just a way of conveying their union because the man is the leader, he's the head. Uh, he initiates that relationship. So to take Bathsheba doesn't mean that he took her by force and without consent. And I can prove this because there are many examples of men taking women in the Bible and it's not rape, it's a consensual relationship. For example, Genesis 25, one. Then again, Abraham took a wife. And her name was Keturah. Okay, Abraham isn't accused of being a rapist, even though he took Keturah. Obviously, it was consensual. Ruth uh, 4.13 also says, so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. So this language of taking is just this idea of coming together in holy matrimony, coming together, you know, uh, in, in that union. And so this, you know, nobody's, of course, claiming we all know that Boaz, you know, was a savior to Ruth and he didn't, you know, rape her in any way. Same thing here with David and Bathsheba. So this idea, this modern idea of raping Bathsheba um, is 
is because there is a push to reinterpret biblical texts with a critical eye towards gender studies, feminism, etc. Think of like that E. Jean Carroll, you know, which, uh, who's just this horrible, horrible person who lied outright about President Trump and made these false claims of rape. Okay, they always do that right before an election. It's pretty obvious. Um, and so it's just, it's just, it's a weak argument. And it's those same type of people, those hyper feminists, you know, with the gender studies garbage, uh, making these types of claims. But nothing in the biblical text suggests that Bathsheba didn't, con uh, didn't consent. Despite it all, she was a willing participant, which is why God punishes both her in the next chapter, just as much as he punishes David.